you said a hundred, you looked at a hundred patients on a particular tumor, for example. What is something in your experience which you found, which you found very important or interesting from? Uh, see, when you experience? when you look at a series of patients, and you start from the nitty gritties. Okay, what did one to hundred? What were their presenting symptoms? Number two, what were our examination clinical findings? Number three, what did the investigation show? Number four, what was the patient's condition before the surgery? Number five, what is the type of surgery that we did? And what was the outcome? After six months, how did the patient proceed? You will find a pattern. You will say, oh, all those patients who came with grade three weakness, a partial paralysis, and we removed the tumor, became completely all right. But those who came with grade 2 did not recover at all, remained at grade, the level of movement by grade of 3. Or you will find that when you deal with some tumors over the speech area or over the areas where there is memory involved or behavior involved, you will find that, okay, these tumors of this type, that is location, but it was malignant, it was benign, what type of tumor, uh, this is more. You would see it and you learn. This is not earth shattering research which will come in all the journals and you know make a big deal of it. But you, it is always at the back of your head that when you again see a patient of a similar tumor, you say, Oh, I think I'll tell you something very, very interesting on which no research has been done. We have what is called a GCS scale, a Glasgow Coma scale, to assess how conscious is a patient. Okay, this is a very, very basic tool, a clinical tool. It's a scale done in Scotland at the Glasgow University. You have to give them credit for what they have done. Teasdale was one of the neurosurgeons. Now, when you have an unconscious patient and he remains unconscious for quite a few days, how is the patient today? A nurse will ask or a doctor. He's not conscious. Now, that not conscious is a wide range. So, is he semi-conscious? Is he just lethargic? Is he completely comatose? Is he deeply comatose or stuporous? So this is called a scale. Now, and that scale goes from 3 to 15. There is no 0 to 1. I won't go into the details of the scale for lay people may not be very interesting. But uh, when you see many patients of head injury and with this scale, between the scale levels, Simple thing, the, the scale is 8 on 15. He will not talk. He will not obey what you are telling him. to. But if you give him some water to drink, he will drink it. Or if you just put the cup to his lips, he will do the drinking action. You show him a mobile phone, not at grade 8, but a little higher. Age. When you ask him, what is your name? He cannot talk. He cannot answer because he has an injury to that part of the brain. You give him a mobile phone and the person at the other end is a familiar voice which says hello and his name, he will reply. I have seen this happen. Don't ask me why and how it happens. Now, if I could see a hundred patients like this and I could study them, I'm sure that anyone, no big credit to anyone, but you could come up with that. With something as to why it is happening. So you ask him, what is your name? He will not reply. He will not even understand. But the same question coming on the phone. Or again, you talk to them. in. This is not something new. This is known. You talk to them in the first language that they learned. When they are coming out from a coma, they will respond. You are talking about interesting cases. This is not a surgical challenge. Interesting. When I was working in Ahmedabad, which is purely Gujarati. It's in the state of Gujarat. I, there was a patient, unconscious lady who had fallen from the play, train and we, no one knew. She was, as we call it in the general hospital, it was in the government hospital, unknown. And she was unconscious. All right. Every day, we had basic facilities there. Every day we tried to see whether she's woken up and all that. What is your name in Hindi, Gujarati? Because she was in the state of Gujarat, Marathi, that is the association. No response. And she would just open her eyes, give you a blank stare, and that is it. 
one fine day when I, and this went on for weeks, three, four weeks. One fine day when I finished examining her and trying to wake her up and I went to the next bed, it was a general ward. From the back, I'm hearing just two words, Manchi Neel, that is drinking water in Telugu. Now, I had worked in Hyderabad. I knew a smattering of Telugu. So I immediately turned around and I said, this lady is from, is talking Telugu. So in Telugu, I asked her, what is your name? I got an answer. In Telugu, I asked her, where are you from? I got an answer. Then when she completely woke up and she recovered, fortunately for her and for us, she could talk Hindi. She knew Hindi. But when she was in that stage of coming out of the coma, she did not respond to any questions in Hindi. But she responded to questions in Telugu at that stage of coma. Now, why does that happen? There are certain clues we have, but we don't have an explanation. In medicine in general, when you don't know why, you have many theories because you don't have the answer. So there are many theories why this happens. Now is not the forum to go into. 